Welcome to the Belated Tech Channel, 61st edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of August 9th through August 15th in space exploration, science, and technology. August 9th, 1945. An atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan by the United States Army Air Force on this date. It was a plutonium bomb, codenamed Fat Man. Three days earlier, the first wartime use of an atomic bomb was the destruction of the Japanese city of Hiroshima. The first bomb, codenamed Little Boy, was a uranium bomb. The second bomb convinced the Japanese military junta then running the country that further fighting was futile and to capitulate. The morality and ethics of nuclear weapons and killing civilians during total war aside, a situation similar to the Dresden, Germany firebombing in February of the same year, a certain amount of historical revisionism has crept into the popular debate since the end of World War II. The reality is a lot grimmer and less pleasant to contemplate. It was costing the US military anywhere from five to 10,000 killed and double that in casualties in the Japanese military, 20 to 30,000 killed for each small island that was captured in the Japanese island chain. With hundreds of islands remaining, a large swath of territory it still held in Southeast Asia and the West Indies, and the mainland islands presenting the prospect of two orders of magnitude greater in deaths. With that sort of arithmetic, the decision by U.S. President Truman was perfunctory. Lost in the controversy are also the facts that Nagasaki was a major military port, one of Japan's largest shipbuilding and repair centers, and an important producer of naval ordnance, and Hiroshima was a major embarkation port and in industrial center that was the site of a major military headquarters. Nevertheless, the carnage was horrific, and a nuclear weapon was never deployed in combat again. August 10, 1966, the Lunar Orbiter 1 was launched on the Atlas Agena D rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 13 on this date. The probe was to photograph possible Apollo landing sites from a lunar orbit. It arrived in lunar orbit on August 14. During the photo acquisition phase of the flight, the Lunar Orbiter 1 photographed the nine selected primary potential Apollo landing sites, including the one in which Surveyor 1 landed seven other potential Apollo landing sites, the east limb of the moon, and 11 areas on the far side of the moon. Lunar Orbiter 1 also took photos of the Earth, giving man the first view of the Earth from the vicinity of the moon. A total of 207 frames was taken, 38 while the spacecraft was in initial orbit, the remainder while it was in the final close-in orbit. The spacecraft was deliberately crashed into the moon after the mission was completed. August 11th, 1909, the liner SS Arapaho was the first ship to use the SOS radio distress call on this date. Its wireless operator, T.D. Hobner, radioed for help after a propeller shaft snapped while off the coast at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, USA. The call was heard by the United Wireless Station at Hatteras. A few months later, the same wireless operator on the SS Arapaho received an SOS from the SS Uruguay the second use of SOS in America. Previously, the distress code CQD had been in use as a maritime distress call, standardized by the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company in 1904. The second International Radio Telegraphic Convention of 1906 proposed the alternative SOS for its distinctive sound. It was ratified as an international standard in 1908. August 12, 1981, IBM introduced the PC personal computer for a $1,600 base price on this date. It shortly eliminated most other machines suitable for home or small business, such as those with the S100 bus running on CPM or their own operating system. The PC's introduction also marked the introduction of the PC-DOS Microsoft operating system, which eventually evolved into Windows. The PC was developed in less than a year at IBM's Boca Raton, Florida facility by using existing off-the-shelf components. 
The IBM PC hardware design also became the industry standard for PC compatibles with the ISA bus. Its Intel 8080 processor speed was 4.77 MHz, and it used from 16 kilobytes up to 640 kilobytes of memory. Data storage choices included five and a quarter inch floppy drives, cassette tape, and later hard disks. We covered the IBM PC, internally known as the Model 5150, in Episode 2 and Milestones 70. August 13, 1889. William Gray of Hartford, Connecticut was granted a U.S. patent for a coin-controlled apparatus for telephones on this date. It was developed by George A. Long, and the first payphone was installed on the corner of Main Street and Central Row in Hartford, Connecticut that same year. The phone worked by pressing the button zero and turning a crank, which alerted the central station that a pay call was being requested. Coin-operated telephones proliferated across the world from that point, and along with telephone booths became ubiquitous during most of the 20th century. Even comic book superheroes made use of the booths, not to make a call, but to change into their disguises. In the 21st century, coin-operated phones have mostly disappeared, only surviving in those places where cell phone use is not permitted or suffers from poor coverage. August 14, 1953. The Wiffle Ball was invented by David Mullaney on this date. It was so named when his son and his friends would refer to a strikeout as a whiff. The wiffle ball is about the same as a regulation baseball, but is hollow, lightweight, of resilient plastic, and no more than one-eighth inch thick. One half is perforated with eight three-quarter inch oblong holes. The other half is non-perforated. This construction allows pitchers to throw a tremendous variety of curveballs and risers. A game was developed using a wiffle ball and became popular nationwide by the 1960s. It is still played in backyards, on city streets, and on beaches. The game is similar to baseball and is designed for 2 to 10 players. A single game of wiffle ball consists of 7 innings or 60 minutes, whichever is earlier. Since 1989, a number of national and regional tournaments have been held to crown an amateur wiffle ball champion. August 15, 1911. The Procter & Gamble Company of Cincinnati, Ohio introduced Crisco, a hydrogenated cottonseed shortening to provide an economical alternative to animal fats and butter on this date. To emphasize the purity of the product within, the Crisco can came inside an additional removable overwrap of white paper. Crisco, the first solidified shortening product made entirely of vegetable oil, was the result of hydrogenation a new process which produced shortening that would stay in solid form year-round, regardless of temperature. As of 2021, Crisco consists of a blend of soybean oil, fully hydrogenated palm oil, and partially hydrogenated palm and soybean oils designed to minimize the content of trans fatty acids. Numerous studies have found that the consumption of TFAs increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. The reformulated Crisco is claimed to have the same cooking properties and flavor as the original version of the product. The brand is currently owned by B&G Foods, which specializes in shelf-stable products. Before we get to the current event of the week, we want to see if you enjoyed this 61st episode of Bladed Tech's The Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices, or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe, and subscribing is free. On July 19th, 2021, Rocket Lab said that it had identified the cause of an electron launch failure on May 15th, and that the vehicle was ready to return to flight. The craft failed to reach orbit after liftoff from Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. 
Shortly after stage separation, the upper stage's single Rutherford engine ignited, but appeared to shut down seconds later, leading to the rocket's destruction. It was the second failure in less than a year for the Electron, one of the leading commercial small launch vehicles. That launch in July of 2020 didn't reach orbit because of faulty wiring in a second stage that had not been discovered during acceptance testing. The latest failure was due to faulty design in the rocket's second stage engine igniter system that sent corrupted instructions to the thrust vector control system. Thrust then deviated outside normal parameters and the engine shut down, resulting in total loss of the spacecraft. The company expected to finish the necessary redesign and resume flights within a month. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered in the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.